I started from the suburbs, now I'm here. The suburbs are of Chicago, and to be clear, I love playing sports, but knew I couldn't. And I kind of like science, but thought I shouldn't. I moved to Des Moines to study at Drake. I'm hoping the above wordplay will take. I left in 07 with a journalism degree with this specific concentration was radio TV. I moved back to Chicago after finishing college, excited to apply all my newfound knowledge. Took a contract job at the Big Ten Network. Didn't care how bad it was for my net worth. It was seasonal. I only worked half the year, so the other half of the calendar was clear. With an excess of both time and bills to pay, I hit up Craigslist because life finds a way. I uh, found a gig as a dog walker and jumped at the chance. Unbeknownst to me, it started my romance with doing work I not only like but love and working with animals. It fit like a glove. To keep wearing that glove, I went on a search. It, I worked at a shelter and in animal research and clinics where I shadowed some amazing vets. It was so fulfilling to pe help, help people with their pets. So where did that leave me? I was in a pickle. My desire to produce TV was growing fickle, even though I worked for the Bears and MLB. It wasn't fulfilling, it just didn't do it for me. I aimed for vet school with much hesitation. I wasn't sure I could achieve graduation. Earlier I said I shouldn't do science because I didn't think my GPA was in compliance. But the thing is, you don't know until you try. So I did all the things in order to apply to vet school. And you know what? They said yes. At the risk of sounding cheesy, I felt hashtag blessed. <laughs> Uh, I moved downstate to Urbana-Champaign. Compared to the city, it felt sort of plain, but soon I was in a whole new world. Here's how my experience unfurled. When I started, I had a very clear plan, run a rural clinic out of my truck or van. Turns out the person who taught that class is a former fellow and a current badass. He mentored me and took me under his wing. He taught me that policy vets were a thing, inspiring me to become one. That's who I am now. I'll do my best in describing how. Dove into government while I was still a student. I figured no experience wouldn't be prudent. I was so elected president of the SAVMA, serving 15,000 members filled up my days. I loved helping others because they're becoming their best selves. It was way cooler than the books on the shelves. I learned that listening is the most important skill. It helped me become a government shell. I finished vet school two plus, two, two plus years ago, and I knew I'd have a tough road to hoe. So I took the summer to travel in Mellow before starting here as a congressional fellow. My boss, Sherry Bustos, was an ag and TNI. She must have thought I was a competent guy because she trusted me with very adult things when most of the time I needed water wings. Uh, food safety and security, immigration and gun violence, the judiciary, agriculture, research, and science. Time out for a question. Sorry for the pause. Isn't science like everything? The year was amazing. I recall it for ages, but day one was heavy. The shooting in Las Vegas in March, some survivors from Parkland were in. They asked nothing of us but to simply listen. Enough of the valleys. Let's move on to a peak where the Peoria Ag Lab was looking bleak. The president's budget zeroed it out, but if we went down, it would be swinging, no doubt. We dug a little deeper, and what did we find? The lab was in a bit of a bind. It was under a de facto hiring freeze and in the process of being brought to its knees. Long story short, we got through to the Fed and made the case the lab was not better off dead. The lab at long last got permission to hire, and its overall outlook became a little less dire. Something else I helped with on the Hill, a small law, you may know it, it's called the Farm Bill, helps the keyword. I was way behind the scenes, part of something bigger. I was playing for my team. Another highlight before we get to year two, as opposition of family separation grew, I wrote a letter to the Fed, aka Oversight, and over 100 House members signed on to the fight. That's year one in a nutshell. Year two is USDA. My host agency's acronym is NIFA, the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. We help tons of animals, even the turkey vulture. The mission, advanced ag research, extension, and ed, which I think is one of the coolest parts of the Fed. C Congress gives us money, which we award via grants, and it's not just animals. Tons of funds go to plants. So what's my role now? A mix of comms and policy. I enjoy communications because of my journalism degree. It's like two jobs in one. I kind of like it that way. How I spend my time just depends on the day. A program I support is called VMLRP, spelled out in fine print. Uh, I hope you can see, see all those states in need of a vet in exchange for their service. We need help with their debt up to 75k over the course of three years, and they can renew the award until the debt clears. The program supports the world's food supply. They're doing their thing for the good of you and I. 
I knew of the program way back in vet school. I remember dreaming how it would be so cool to get that award, but be hands-on with the critters. But a DC without vets? That gave me the jitters. So what about comms? Let's talk ledge affairs. Turns out the Hill's impact is felt everywhere. Here's another story. The version is short. In January, Congress gave me a report to detail our programs, 65 to be exact, and how they appear on the budget. In fact, straightforward, I thought this will go well. <laughs> OMG, haha, <laughs> poop emoji, LOL. It wasn't that bad, I just wanted some laughs, but the process was not without its gaffes. The take home message I'll always remember is to manage my time from Jam 1 to December. A new program at NIFA called FRSAN, some more fine print so you can read it again. It helps farmers and ranchers manage their stress. When the chance came to help, I said, heck yes. Mental health is deeply important to me because it's taking a toll on my vet family. Vets are more likely to take their own life. For some, it's the only way out of their strife. Men are twice as likely and women 3.5. I can't stand that we can't stand to be alive. And since the same is impacting farmers too, Helping the program is the least I can do. So what's next for me? Uh, who really knows? It's anybody's guess how the story goes. TV to vet med to federal policy. Can the next tip please not require a new degree? <laughs> it might though, which would make me a fool. And I've said before, I'll never go back to school. Truth be told, I'm working toward a master's. It's all, it's all online though, which is a bit of a disaster. It's in public health, which is kind of important, especially with so much worldly portent. But I'll save all that for another day. My time's almost up. I gotta get out of the way. There's so much more. I couldn't cover it all. If you're curious, let's connect sometime this fall. I mean that too. The sentiment is sincere. We're nothing if we're not in touch with our peers. So as we all go our separate ways, let us remember to cherish these days where the chance to make real change is in sight. Happy hour to all and to all a happy night.